Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Malachi Cowtipper bringing you another game of StarCraft 2. Tonight my opponent will be Dr. Falcon. Like a lot of the people I've been playing, we have a 1v1 in Platinum, and that's kind of what I'm trying to shoot for, is if I'm going to cast someone's game, I'm going to try to cast someone that's at least in the Platinum League, or if I could cast and beat someone in the Diamond League, or get an epic fail for me fighting someone in the Diamond League, I'd be totally cool with that too. So, me as the Red Zerg down here, lower left-hand corner of Zelnaga Caverns versus Dr. Falcon, Blue Protoss, upper right-hand corner of Zelnaga Caverns. And I'm sorry, I know I've casted probably, I think this is my third uh, ZVP on Zelnaga Caverns, but I really like ZVP as far as a matchup goes, because you have the almighty, powerful Protoss versus, you know, the swarm of Zerg. They don't have a cool name, like, they can't, Zerg can't say for Ire, what are they gonna say, like, for Overmind or something? That's just kinda lame, but anyway, so... Sending out my scouting drone. I usually like to send out my scouting drone a little bit early, right as I get the nine food and I start saving up for my overlord. I figure that's a good time to send out a scout because sometimes you can catch them before they've even thrown down their gateway, brass probes, you know, just do a lot of cool stuff with that initial time that you can on there. And the reason why I'm casting this game is it has a really, really cool outcome. There's some good stuff that happens in the game. And it just overall, it was a very enjoyable game for me to play, so I figured everyone else would hopefully enjoy watching it as well. If not, flame my post, whatever, it's cool. So, huge movement pattern here, and the idea is that with this pro coming over here, and right there, boom, block him from throwing his gateway. I should have done a little bit of a shorter one, and, you know, I like... I like it when you can occasionally do that, it's kind of cool. I'm going to send my worker out here, I'm going to scare the probe away, and then I'm just going to set another movement pattern over here because I want this guy to just be able to go at this, to scout for a while. I can continue droning up over here, so 14 extractor, 14 drone. going to be a 14 pull, very, very standard play. I think I do this just about all the time. I might go for, yep, 14 pull, then right back to another drone on there so what he is doing over here going for a very fast very aggressive two gateway build so I kind of prefer it when a Protoss does this over let's say doing the gateway cyber core because I instantly know that he's going for a four gate or at least that's just what I've generally seen from a Protoss doing that and this build it's aggressive but it means that that cyber core gets out a little bit later those warp gates aren't there quite as quickly and it just, I feel like it actually gives me a little bit more breathing room, even though he could definitely start chrono boosting out quite a few Zealots. And there goes that Cyber Core. So it's barely slowing this guy down, you know. He cancels it. I didn't even notice that. It cancels the Cyber Core for another gateway, so there you go. Learning something new every day. Let's pay attention to my Zerg base over here. See what's going on. Let's bring up the income tab. You guys probably want something interesting to look at. 16 to 14. So I'll join him by just a little bit. And, you know, probably saving up those not using those chrono boosts wow we could be seeing a lot of stuff being done with them he's got to be saving them for something you know to start warping in a lot of zealots to start bringing in you know warp gate tech as soon as it's done so i'm willing to bet he's banking it for a reason i can't imagine you get to platinum without having good management of your chrono boost but because I did see that second gateway, I will be pumping out a few Zerglings right off the bat and getting my Queen right away. So I figured with a few Zerglings and a Queen, I should be able to deal with a couple Zealots coming in right there. Let's see if he's done anything with that Chrono Boost. Still sitting at 100 out of 100 Chrono Boost. And Pylon going up back over here. Good idea. Catch any mutas that might be coming over the wall right there. Just finally going for a gas. So this is a really, you know, first time I've watched this replay yet. So there's a Chrono Boost going down. I was not aware that he went for such a late gas. And looking at what he has right here, it's costed him, as you guys can see, a lot of minerals throwing up these three gateways, all these pylons right away, and not saturating, you know, to the fullest of his potential. You know, it's not bad saturation, there's two pro two probes per worker, so definitely not as bad as it could be. And if he pushed out right now with just a couple zealots and chrono boosted these guys out, he probably could have taken me or done a lot of damage to me early on because I did decide to go for a fast expand down over here. And a lot of Zerg players have commented they don't like this map. I've said this in one of my videos before. Big open area, a lot of places for, you know, your expansion to be attacked on. To me, that just gives me more room to outflank my opponents out the furthest, just having to defend something like this. Because this isn't what a Zerg wants. We want room to be free and roam and rip your head off. We don't like narrow little corridors because there's less room to do head ripping. But... What I'm going to be using these links for, I'm just going to poke up the ramp, see what I can see, make sure he's not getting an expansion out, and, you know, picks off one of the links I thought maybe I could sneak past, but there's just enough zealots there, you know, he 
definitely didn't have those guys set to hold position, so maybe I could have abused that by getting some lanes through. And I do have speed, so, you know, that would have been pretty hard for him to catch. I'm going to send an Overlord back over here. I love positioning an Overlord back beyond this ridge because it'll let you know when he's going to expand. And if you send out some lanes right when that expansion is at about 75%, you can get there. You can either force him to cancel it when he's wasted all the time waiting for it to warp in. Or if it finishes, you might stand a chance at picking it off, which is even better because then he's out 400 minerals. So we're dead even, 23 to 23 harvesters. Check out the army composition right here. Food count nearly identical. He's outspent me by about 125 minerals in the army composition I've got. You know, less than 24 zerglings. He's got a small number of zealots and a stalker. So pretty even mix so far. And I just want to check out the APM here. This is something I really need to work on. I'm trying to get my APM just to be on average above 50. I think my early game just, I usually kind of like sit here, chill my base, four, SD, build drones. Not really clicking around and doing much. Like my APM will go way up later on in the game. But just early on average, you know, I know it doesn't necessarily matter, but I would like that to be higher. Just kind of a cool number to check out. So, 28 to 24, I am going to start to boom ahead in the harvesters, getting this expansion down at 21 supply. Because if you put it down much later than that, by the time it comes out and you can start using it, it's going to be around that 9 or 10 minute mark. And that's probably when this guy's going to want to be pushing out. I don't want an expansion, you know, being mid built or worse, being built than having to be destroyed right away just so I can pull back and defend myself. And my girlfriend is being very flirtatious right now, which is actually pretty awesome. So 33 to 25 harvesters, this is going to give me a big economic boom. Going back to the army tab right here, food count basically staying dead even. His army has doubled in the last minute of the game versus mine. Basically stayed right where it is. And still has not gone for that expo. My overlord is chilling over here. He's like, bro, no expo. And I'm like, all right, sweet. That basically gives me the room to just continue to drone. I'm going to throw these gases down here because I do have my lair up and I am going for spire. So you're going to see some mutiling play. Going for the plus one attack on the lings really helps because both your zealots and your stalkers have one armor and half the stalker's health is shield. And you've got to bust through a lot, I guess. I totally mentally mind went out there on the words I need to say but you know when it comes down to their health getting rid of that 100 health it's 20 it's 20 percent quicker it makes a big difference and I'm just gonna keep sending out this pack of lings which gets progressively larger and larger letting him know that I'm in control of this map I've got an overlord positioned over here to see if he's gonna start putting anything over by the watchtower the zealot is like oh boy I wonder if Iyer is worth getting ripped apart by zerglings for right there so I'm just gonna poke up with the entire thing again Get him to waste a force field. That's awesome. It's, you know, less energy that he's going to have later on down the road. And right over here, he built an ice cream stand. As he called it, I think that's awesome. I'm going to call all proxies ice cream stands from now on. Then he's actually going to be doing a really cool attack right up in here. So my spire just finishes. If we check out the production tab, holy nine mutalisks coming out right off the bat. So I've been banking my money for a while. And now I'm going to send these lings with their plus one upgrade nearly completed to break down these rocks because I'm getting ready to expand. You know, I put an overlord over here. I put a creep tumor in over here because I hate it when this happens to me on this map. And there you go. If I check out the awesome Malachi Kauti provision over here, I've got no clue. I'm completely oblivious to this little force building up over here. And he's got the troops moving out over here. So I'm assuming by the immortal that he has in there that he was expecting to see some roach play, which from what I... What I've gathered is pretty typical, you know, counter to a four gate rush, just go to roaches, but I found that I can generally get enough lings and get mutas into play before I'll really need those roaches. I will deploy roaches if I see a one gate if I see the one gateway with the cyber core, because that means that, you know, you're gonna need